Well, hello, Shoreline Church. Uh, we're drawing to the end of another week. Uh, this is your devotional for Friday, April 24th. And as we come to the close of another week, I'm going to read uh, Psalm 78. And I tell you what, this psalm really emphasizes the importance of passing faith on from one generation to the next. Whether it's your blood relatives and their family, or just adults who know Jesus sharing faith with young people, or mature Christians sharing faith with young Christians. But we need to pass our faith on. Listen to this message that comes through, and maybe this is a chance for you to look and say, how can I do that in this season? How can I be encouraging younger people or people younger in the faith to walk more closely with Jesus? Psalm 78, beginning in verse 1. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things from old. Things we have heard and known. Things our ancestors have told us. There's that historical passing on of faith. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation. That's a great declaration. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob. He established the law in Israel. That was God's people. He passed it on to them, which he commanded their ancestors to teach their children so that the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn will tell their children. You start to get the picture, don't you? Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. You can hear the heartbeat of God coming through the voice of the psalmist. You've received God's truth. You've heard God's word. You're learning to walk with this living God who made you and who loves you. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell the next generation. Parents, share your faith with your children. What if they don't want to hear it? There's times where they won't. But be winsome and be prayerful. Don't be obnoxious, but be bold. And when you share your stories of what God has done in your life and who he is to you, it will touch their hearts and their lives, even if they don't let you know it at the time. It will impact them for the good. Grandparents, pray for the next generation. Pray for your grandchildren and those after them. Those that are spiritually mature, look and say, who are the younger people in my life that I can pray for, that I can encourage, and that I can share stories of God's goodness? I love how the, the psalmist is so clear that you need to pass on your stories of faith. God has shown up in your life. God has done great things for you and in you and through you. Share those stories. And here's the beautiful part. Everyone likes stories, special, especially kids. So tell your stories. Just share how God has shown up, how he's done beautiful things, how he sustained you in a painful time, how he guided you or kept you safe through a crazy moment. Share those stories often and let them touch the next generation. So let's pray. Dear Lord, this is our prayer, that we would be faithful to pass on to the next generation the goodness of who you are, that we would tell stories of your faithfulness, of your presence, of your power, that we would think about those times where we couldn't have made it through if you hadn't shown up and we would tell our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, people who are younger in faith, Lord, let us, let us share our stories with boldness and with joy and with confidence, knowing that those stories have power to influence the next generation and those who we share with, may they share with the next generation and may they share with the generations after them. Lord, use us to pass on this good news, the story of your faithfulness, to the, all the generations to come until Jesus, till you come again and we see you face to face. We pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Well, Dr. Rick Alexander's got a few things to share with you and I hope you enjoy these words and have a great weekend and we'll see you Sunday online at church. God bless you. We got some good news this week during Governor Gavin Newsom's press conference on Wednesday, during which he outlined six requirements that had to be met by California before we lift our shelter-in-place order. While he did not give a specific date for this, he did say that we're making steady progress, and he was hopeful that within the next week to 10 days that hospitals could start uh, doing elective surgery. A couple of the requirements have been talked about previously, one of which is that while we have a flattened curve in California, we'd like to see declining numbers of new COVID cases over approximately a two-week period. In addition, we want to make sure we have plenty of personal protective equipment 
for our hospitals and our caregivers. One important criteria that we have to develop in a robust way is the, is the ability to do contact tracing. We all know that we need to be doing a lot more tests so we can, uh, we can identify and isolate uh, COVID patients. But in addition, contact tracing allows us to follow up with any person that the COVID positive patient might've been in contact with. This is really uh, important in not letting the disease get out of hand and will require uh, uh, increased personnel in our public health departments. This slide from earlier in the week demonstrates why we can now start to begin talking about lifting our shelter in place order here in California. Bay Area leaders were the first in the nation to take dramatic action aimed at curbing the spread of the coronavirus. Many thought it was going too far, but in the days and the weeks following the shelter in place order here, governors and mayors across the country followed the Bay Area and California lead. As you can see, the Bay Area, including Monterey County's curve, which is even more, even flatter, uh, demonstrates the effect that the sheltering in place has had. Because of the great success we've had, we can now look forward to lifting this uh, order earlier than other areas. More uh, information to come on that in future updates. The last topic I wanted to talk with you today involves the limitations of communication uh, when wearing a mask. Specifically, it's really difficult to judge somebody's emotional state when their face is covered. Maybe I can best illustrate this with a few examples. This is me being very upset. This is me being very confused. This is me being very happy. And this is me being very sad. Now, probably you're having a little difficulty determining all these various emotions as I'm speaking. In order to improve that uh, aspect of communication, I'm recommending that we consider starting to talk more with our hands. So for example, this is how you could better communicate being upset. This is uh, a better way of illustrating being confused. And uh, this is a better way of explaining that you perhaps agree with the person. I hope these uh, illustrations are helpful. And as you go into your week, uh, feel free to utilize uh, these ideas and others as well. But most of all, make sure you stay socially distant, not personally distant, but socially distant, and you uh, continue to wear masks in public. Look forward to meeting with you again next week. Have a safe week. God bless you.